Congratulations. You are still alive. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive. But not you. Not anymore. If you had $700,000 and less than three weeks to shoot a horror movie with your friends, how do you think it would go? Would the limited budget and schedule cripple your creativity, or would it inspire something inside you that would lead to one of the most acclaimed genre films of the 21st century? Well, why don't we just ask these guys? No, we had similar interests. James was talented and I was interested in being talented. So I, I, uh, I, I shared in his life. He let, me, he let me come into his world, which was fantastic. James Wan and Lee Wanell have individually carved out their own impressive corners in the film industry, but while these days the filmmakers are working on giant studio projects and getting rich, they were once just a pair of film students who just wanted to make their first movie. A movie that would draw inspiration from the explosive success of the now iconic found footage film, The Blair Witch Project. A movie with a villain that has since become an icon, and even recently, a hero? I still have a lot of work that needs to be done. Folks, it's the Halloween season, and like many of you, I've been on a long bender of watching horror movies that are on my ever-growing list of seasonal rewatches. Among the titles that I just can't seem to skip is 2004's Saw. But before having sequels and spin-offs galore, Saw started as a small mystery thriller made by filmmakers with so much unique style and flair that resonated with audiences so much that the film is now hailed as a modern horror classic. To overcome something, you have to understand what a perfect engine it is. So, today we're gonna dive deep into the Book of Saw, revisit the first film, and determine exactly why this gritty, low-budget bathroom production is so important to horror fans almost 20 years later. I'm Kier with Joe Blow Horror, and you're watching Deconstructing. Most people are so to be alive. Imagine this, you wake up in a bathtub full of water and quickly realize that you have no idea where you are or why you're there. There's another person in the room with you, two actually. One is alive and one is dead. The living one is chained to the wall and you soon realize that you're chained to the wall too. And the game is simple, get out. I want to play a game. That's the plot of Saw, a clean and simple story about two men desperate to escape their captivity at any cost. This movie stands out as being quite an attention grabber, despite the incredibly small scope of the tale being told. It's like how we all love 12 Angry Men because the specific and small story is carried by dynamic and interesting performances and dialogue. Now, I'm not saying that the performances in this movie are anywhere near the status or prestige of 12 Angry Men. but what this movie lacks in talent in front of the camera, it makes up for with the directorial style and editing of James Wan, mixed with the sharp twist ending provided by Wanell. It was a very fresh movie at the time. My name is very fucking confused, what's your name? So, as usual, today we're going to break down this movie by way of our four key categories. First, we'll discuss the movie's origin and how it went from idea to production. Following that up, we'll get into the film's legacy, where we talk a little bit about the massive waves that this movie has made over the years. Then we'll get into a bit of trivia, so make sure you're studied up on your Saw lore, and we'll end it all off by talking about the movie's X Factor, where I'm looking for the one small thing that takes this movie from being just another bloody good time at the movies to being an iconic horror film that's well worth its weight in guts. So if you're ready, then keep your back to the wall, and don't forget to drop a like on the video. And let's hit play on Saw. Well, do you have any idea how you got here? No. Ah. 
As we know, Saw is the brainchild of James Wan and Lee wan -El. The duo met in film school, and after graduating, they wanted to get to work on their first feature. They were able to come up with a working budget of about $30,000, which quickly proved to be too small of a stack for these guys to work with. So, they started by shopping the script around to Australian producers and almost got a deal, but it fell through. It actually wasn't until they were on their very last leg that they decided to spend a little bit of money to get to Los Angeles and shop their movie around Hollywood. And these guys are pros, and even in the beginning, they showed that they were serious about their idea. They went as far as to package their script and pitch it with an accompanying DVD short film that would showcase the jaw trap, which has become an iconic piece of imagery for the Saw franchise. The short film provided a sample of Juan's visual style, most importantly, but it also showed the ambitious designs of the traps. Think of it like a reverse bear trap. Here, I'll show you. It was important for Juan and Juanel to work together on the film if it were to end up getting funded. James Wan was set on directing the film and not interested in selling the script and then just walking away. He quoted, Lee and I just love the project so much and we wanted a career in filmmaking, so we stuck to our guns and said, look guys, if you want the project, we're coming on board. Lee has to act in it and I have to direct it. And just like they'd hoped, the actor-director duo ended up getting the money and the jobs that they needed to make their movie. In fact, when producer Greg Hoffman saw the short film, he and his partner started a sister company to their production house, Evolution Entertainment, and that became the iconic Twisted Pictures, which we've seen at the top of just about every installment. Despite speculation that Wanell played the lead character as a budgetary restriction, Wanell always wanted to play the lead and was actively pursuing a career in acting at the time. I know he's not the best actor in this movie, but whatever, it gets a pass. How do I know you're telling the truth? You could be the one who put me in this room! The movie shot in just 18 days, with only one set being built the bathroom, and the rest were being done either on location or on borrowed film sets for other active productions. The film spends most of its runtime in the bathroom location, and about 50% of filming was spent on those scenes. I went to bed in my shithole apartment and woke up in an actual shithole. So, the movie was released in theaters around Halloween in 2004, and I will never forget the explosion of popularity that this movie caused. I remember all of my friends sneaking into theaters to watch this movie when we were in middle school, and I remember the Billy the Puppet merch, and I remember the insane theory that Jigsaw was just Kevin McAllister all grown up. I remember all of it. I remember everything now. This movie's legacy was apparent from the very beginning. It was one of those instantly iconic films, and it especially hit at a time when slashers were petering out and audiences were looking for something new. This movie inspired movies like Hostel and Would You Rather, but it also launched the vast franchise of Saw movies that have followed in the 20 years since. Hell, it just got back to its roots with the recently released prequel sequel, Saw X, and that seems to really be making its own lane at the movie. No the only thing I have not provided is your anesthetic, but trust me, you will want to remain alert. And not to mention that it opened the door for all of the incredible work that Juan and Juanel have been able to do off of the success of this movie. There is no debating that this movie has one hell of a legacy, and part of that is because of this scene right here. This kind of imagery was not only new to audiences, but it was downright terrifying. This movie had a sense of grit and truth and reality that makes it extremely hard to watch, yet impossible to look away from. The movie demands your attention with its kinetic and wild editing style and textured grain of the film stock and even the iconic voice of Jigsaw. Game over. 
Which reminds me, the final twist of this movie really shook me and my friends the first time we saw it. While now, it takes a lot more to surprise an audience, at the time, the reveal that Jigsaw was in the room the entire time just felt like a huge shock. And while I don't know if it's really that impressive of a twist, it was romanticized so much at the time that I think it did help cement this film's legacy. Like, it's definitely on someone's list of best horror movie twists. You know, while the production schedule was extremely tight for this movie, James Wan still found a way to work in some of his signature style into the shots. According to Wan, he wanted the camera movements during the scenes to match the internal feelings of his characters. So you'll notice that many of the shots framing Carrie Elway's character, the shots are steady and smooth, but following that, the scenes framing Wan L's character are shaky and kinetic. This is meant to reinforce the idea that Adam is not as composed and calm as his cohort. Juan intentionally did this to help guide the character development, and obviously the same could be said for the film's editing. I think for a first time duo, these two really showed a lot of confidence in their skills, and James Wan must have been feeling especially optimistic in the making of this movie, as he decided to forego a director's fee to instead get percentage points of the box office run. Honestly, that's bold, but if you ask Wan about the decision, he'll tell you that he doesn't regret it in the slightest. And why would he? Not only did the movie gross over a hundred million dollars, but that also means that his budget was able to be allocated to the production. So everybody wins. What else aren't you telling me? Well, um, let's see. And before we move on, let's see if you can answer this question. True or false, the iconic Billy Puppet was originally a children's ventriloquism dummy donated by Lee Wannell that he had as a child, and it was altered with a new wig and some face paint. Comment your answers down below. Actually, the puppet was built from scratch by Juan and Juanel for the film. It wasn't a modified version of anything existing, like say Michael Myers' iconic Captain Kirk mask. Okay folks, we've been through everything from the talented filmmakers behind this movie to the fortunate and fruitful release of the movie and even the mass impact that it's had on the genre in the years since. And I'm happy to say that the X Factor for this video was actually easier this time around than it has been in the past. While the movie is easy to praise solely based on the merits of its legacy, I think the standout of this movie is actually pretty clear because of the small scope. The stars had to really align in order for this movie to find its way onto the big screen. The idea was fresh and new, the filmmakers were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and the jaw trap scene that they demoed was scary and realistic enough to get the movie funded. But all of those things could have been meaningless to the franchise if it not had been for one thing. Billy the Puppet. <laughs> Billy is iconic in every sense of the word. Billy is a horror icon that isn't even alive. You can't compare him to anything because he's not a conscious thing. Like, Chucky is possessed, he's the villain. In Saw, Billy is just an extension of the villain. Jigsaw's the bad guy, and Billy is just a puppet. The most iconic fucking puppet I've ever seen. Somehow, this little puppet that was only there for the sake of creepy imagery seems to be the marketing tool that has made each installment recognizable to the franchise. Tobin Bell is an amazing actor, and he's so amazing that we associate him with Billy, almost like he played dual roles. The puppet is just one of those icons that you know from your very first glance. And folks, let's never forget that Billy would kick this guy's ass. 